Okay, guys, this is being recorded. One thing I say at the beginning of every single webinar is watch this again, especially if you're newer to options and if you're newer to me teaching, because I have specific rules that I have to have checked off in order for a, a specific strategy to be implemented. And that goes without saying across the board. That narrows it down for us so that we know exactly what strategy is appropriate for this environment or this situation, all right? It's not always gonna work out, all right? So let me get a couple of things out of the way. This is gonna be on poor man's covered call. Medium volatility strategy. One thing that I say at this one is I probably should have had these moved a little bit closer to the beginning of mid, um, medium volatility strategies, but it works out great in the environment that we're in because we're seeing this explosion in volatility in these front months and not so much out the curve, which is usually the opposite that happens when we see volatility expanding. It usually affects the further duration more than the near-term expiration, all right? So since we're seeing this situation happen, it sets up perfectly for these medium volatility strategies because we're able to buy really cheap volatility out the curve and sell really expensive volatility up front, which is going to make this strategy a little bit easier to uh, implement. How doing, JQ? I see Wolfman's in that. <laughs> Greetings, Wolfman. I see you, JQ. I see you. All right. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you guys may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal from a commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis. I started trading in college with some money I'd earned. And after graduating, I moved to Chicago. And in that time, I've traded everything from stocks, financial futures, commodity futures, options, and uh, options, currencies, basically options on all these markets and just about every market condition. Also, we gotta go over this disclaimer. It basically says any opinions, news, research, and analysis, or other information contained here should not constitute investment advice or solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, what this is telling you guys is because I don't know what's in your portfolio and I don't know your guys' risk parameters, I can't possibly give you Investment advice, which makes sense. If I don't know what's going on with you guys, I can't give you investment advice. That just isn't uh, a very good uh, practice, to be quite honest. Bottom line is do your own homework and past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. Also, you can follow me on Twitter at Wolfman's blog. I usually tweet out some of the trades that I do uh, late in the day so that you guys can uh, participate in those. I talk about most of my trades, though, during the daily market commentaries in the morning. So make sure you guys tune into those if you want to uh, see what I'm doing constantly. Like if you want to keep track of what I'm doing, you, that's the place to keep track. Uh, you can also follow us at Pro Trader Strat for different market wisdom and stuff. Um, like I said, this is going to be on the poor man's covered call. And I see a couple of people already throwing up some questions. So let me get those out of the way real quick. Uh, Marina, you're late. That's okay, Marina. You're you're not missing anything except for my boring intro, maybe. <laughs> Chris is, uh, hi, Eric. Has the definition of volatility any relation to the VIX or the VIX under 16, under 20? Um, I, I don't really have any designation for that usually. I, you know, the VIX being where it's at, anything above 20 is really high VIX. Usually, I think the historical level is right around 15. So, um, it is a little bit higher, but at the end of the day, um, it, we've seen higher, but also we're at an extreme. So I'm, I've been talking about this in the daily market commentaries. I'm looking for an opportunity to get in on this high volatility that we're seeing, uh, and take advantage of it. And I actually started adding some positions today, uh, in the daily market commentary. I talked about those. All right. So poor man's covered call. How do we set this up? I'm going to go through the pros and the cons of this. One of the biggest pros is basically that you can do this with a lot less margin than going out and buying a stock and then putting a, you know, a short call against it. But a couple of things. It's a diagonal spread. It's also covered calls on leaps. Now, I leaps is long term uh, anticipated uh securities basically i'm not going to go out that 300 days on this i usually look for somewhere between 90 and 150 days 
for my leap, if you will. Okay. So a lot of people will go out and use the leaps. I like to stay in a little bit closer because I want to cover all of my extrinsic value of these options. And the extrinsic value of an option is simply what basically decays away to nothing. And um, what we want to keep a hold of is the intrinsic value. And that's basically what the value of that option is. And I'll get into more detail about that here in a minute. But that's really what we want to own is that strike at value when we in, uh, enter this trade. And it's not a calendar spread because remember when we did the calendar spreads, it's the same strike. So we aren't going to be using the same strike. Therefore, it cannot be considered a calendar. All right. All right. So we do need to have a bullish assumption with this because it is a very bullish strategy. We can lose money on the way down. It is going to be limited. It's not, it's not going to be uh, risk all the way to zero. We're going to have a, an embedded stop in this. It's a synthetic stop with this strategy. So um, if you did a covered call strategy with your stock, you wouldn't have this protection on to the downside like you would with the poor man's covered call. You would have to put on a collar around that strategy, which is uh, buying a put and then financing it by selling a call. All right. Well, with this, the beauty in this one is when we sell this call every time, we're going to be able to actually lower our base, what we paid for this strategy, right? And have limited risk to the downside. No sound, tried three times. We'll wait for the video. Banu, anybody else losing sound? Because it looks like to me it's coming through. All right. It looks like everybody else is fine. All right. Good enough. All right. So why do we want to use options in place of stock. Well, I kind of mentioned this. One is reduced risk, right? If we have uh, reduced risk to the downside with poor man's covered call versus just the covered call strategy, then we have reduced risk to the downside. If you had a stock uh, and just did a covered call, you are at risk for that stock going to zero. We are going to be limited uh, to the downside because we're buying about an 84 delta stock. So, or an 84 delta strike, I should say. And therefore, if the underlying goes below, if our 84 strike was the 200 calls, let's say, and the underlying went below 200, we aren't at risk of losing any more money below that. So you have reduced risk there. You also have reduced capital requirement. Oh, sorry, we got reduced risk and we also have reduced capital requirements. Reduced capital requirements comes in, if you went to buy a $100 stock, right, a 100 times, you're going to have to pay about $10,000 for that. With options, it's going to be about, we're going to have to put up about $2,500 in margin for it. So much less uh, capital intensive, which means that if you have a smaller account or a smaller portfolio, you could actually create a more diversified portfolio using options than you could with the regular stock. Now, yes, there are some downstrokes to it, but that we'll get to here in a minute, but that is a definite perk uh, by being able to create that more diversified portfolio of securities. And you have a higher probability of success with this strategy. The reason why we have a higher probability of success is because of that limited, uh, that limited um, downside and the fact that we are going to create a spread that has a higher probability of success. You can set this, if this is assuming you follow my rules here, okay? Because you can set this strategy up where you lock in a loss, all right? If you were just to go online and listen to these guys tell you how to build a poor man's covered call, you could set this strategy up and legitimately lock in a loss, meaning you pay more say it's a $10 wide spread, you end up paying $11. You've locked in a loss if you do that. So I go through the steps to show you how we are going to increase our probabilities of success with that. And then finally, uh, one of the advantages here is your return on capital, right? If you are using less capital to create the same profit, then you are 
having a lower return on capital or a higher return on capital. Because if I use $2,500 to make that same, say $200, that return on my capital is much higher than if I paid $10,000 to make that extra $200, right? So your return on capital is much better with this strategy using options. Some of the disadvantages though are, you've gotta be able to stay active when there's earnings. Because we're buying that long 150 days out, there is a high probability that there's going to be earnings in it. Yeah, you could use ETFs and stuff like that and there's not gonna be earnings in it. But this is assuming you're using stocks and you are probably going to have at least one, maybe two uh, earnings involved with this strategy, okay? And we don't mind it be, having the earnings happen during our long call area. We don't want that earnings to land where we're trying to sell that call against it, right? We wanna do it where we're buying it because volatility expands going into earnings. And when we're buying it, that volatility expanding helps us. But when we're selling, that volatility expanding hurts us. So we don't wanna be selling the short call in the earnings cycle, but we are probably going to have to stay active in option cycles with earnings in that long call, okay? Now, another disadvantage is, is, or disadvantage is that the options will expire. If you buy the stock, it never expires, all right? The other thing is we could have forced assignment and that is on the short call, all right? If it blasts up through our short call, we could get forced assignment on those short calls. Just know that we have that longer duration call that we can also force assignment to offset everything, all right? The other uh, aspect of this strategy is you're probably going to cover it as soon as this short call gets breached, all right? You've beaten the probabilities at that point. Don't take the strategy any further. That's where I'm usually closing it out, all right? So you, but you could get forced assignment on the short call. Um, to be quite honest, if you had a covered call strategy, you could uh, have forced assignment there as well. Um, you don't receive a dividend, no ways about it. When you're doing a poor man's covered call, if you buy a call uh, or, uh, something like that, you are not going to get the dividend when you're playing with the options, all right? So you that is a downstroke if you're looking for that as extra income. All right, so some of my rules here. A uh, little bit different than normal. If you guys have been following along the last couple of week, or, uh, webinars, you know I usually go with keys to success. This is somewhat of those keys to success in line with that in a sense. But these are rules of thumb because I, I have a tendency to break the rules on the poor man's covered call, meaning six months to a year out for the long call, okay? Most people will go a year or further, all right? So what I'm telling you is I go a little bit shorter here on my rules for the poor man's covered call. It doesn't mean that you can't go further out in time. Some people like to go one and a half to two years for that long call to minimize that theta decay, but the problem is there's so much theta in those options, it's really hard to uh, pay off that extrinsic value like I like to do rather quickly. So I usually pick this one to be inside somewhere around the 150 days to expiration. That makes it easy to pay off the extrinsic value of this strategy. Remember the extr extrinsic value is what is, uh, going to decay away in this option. The intrinsic value is what we get to hold on to if we are, uh, you know, it is what we pay to make it um, value, all right? So if the underlying was trading $101 and we did the 100 calls, then the intrinsic value is $1, right? extrinsic value would be if that option, the 100 calls were a dollar uh, uh, and 25 cents. The extrinsic value would be that 25 cents. So don't pay a lot for extrinsic value. As a matter of fact, we're going to be able to do this a lot of times where we're gonna pay off the extrinsic value in one fell swoop the way that the market is set up right now. But this is what we're looking at. If we look at Pepsi and we have this set up, where we have the Jan Nove and paying $13.24 for a 
uh, what is that, an 18 or sorry, $17.50 wide spread. That would be about 75% the width of the strikes. That's a green light. So when we're talking about setting this up, we want to make sure that we're setting this up where we only pay less than 75% the width of those strikes, all right? That is a green light. A yellow light is less than, from 75% to about 85%. That's a yellow light. If you have to pay over 85% the width of the spread, then we are just not going to do it, all right? We're gonna move on to another strategy. We really wanna get it to where we pay less than 75% the width of the strikes. So. Another example would be on a $10 spread, we're paying less than $7.50, all right? Now, using lower volatility stocks. Now, the reason why is like a Tesla or something like that, we're going to see those big whipsaws, the tech. Uh, this isn't implied volatility that I'm talking about. This is lower implied uh, or lower volatility stocks. We just, we want like slow movers. We want to see this grind higher. Uh, because we want our short call to expire worthless. It's not to say that this won't work with a Tesla. I'm just saying uh, to, to uh, keep the angst at a minimum, stay away from those when you first start doing this strategy. Uh, you're going to see the profitability come in and the profitability go out back and forth as these juke back and forth, up and down. Uh, I'd rather see it just slowly rally and then let that short call expire worthless. All right. And we're going to sell the near term out of the money option. Now, they don't really give you a, uh, a strike or a month for this type of strategy. If you're going to go online, my rule here is you're going to sell about the 36 ish delta it's, or just one or two strikes out of the money to capture all of that theta decay that we would see in that long duration option that we're buying. And this is just a representation of that theta decay that I keep talking about. Like I said, we're gonna wanna sell in here so that that front month that we sold decays rather quickly. And the one that we buy out here on the curve is a little, it's gonna flatten out. So we're not gonna see as much theta decay here, but we see that rapid theta decay up front. And yes, when this expires worthless, you can roll this out in time to another 35 days to expiration or closest to it to capture more uh, premium. Every time you sell it and roll it out, you're collecting more premium. You probably are able to collect more premium and roll this higher. So you're increasing the width of the spreads as well. Okay. All right. Um, and making sure that there's not a big difference in the vega between months. Now I've talked about this several times with the other ones. Anytime we're using different monthly cycles in the options chain, we need to make sure that the volatility coefficient is relatively close between the two months. Now this generally speaking goes to the fact that volatility will have a tendency to increase um, out the curve. Like if we looked at this example here, um, you can see it actually decreases. That's what we're seeing right now in these options is this decrease in volatility. That's not really normal. Normally, what we do is we see out on the options is that it will start to increase because volatility affects the further duration more than the near duration. But we have had some crazy moves that has really driven the volatility higher in this front month. So it's almost a pick em for this rule because my rule is on an increase. So it goes from 31.58 to 32.58. That would be a green light. Anything in between that, less than 2% increase. A yellow light would be a you know between a 2 and a 3% increase between the one that we're selling and the one that we are buying out here 150 some odd days, right? This is 28, it's lower, so it doesn't come into effect. Anything over 5% different increase going from 31 to say 36 is a red light. 5% increase is a red light. Find a different strategy. You will be uh, 
paying way too much for volatility out here than you are able to sell here. Right now, because we are able to see that it decreases, we are selling high volatility and buying low volatility. That's what we want. Anytime you can do that, anytime this volatility decreases out the curve, you are good to go. It is a narrow difference. A negative is good. All right. A positive is where we have to worry about it. So an increase of 2% is an, uh, or less than a 2% increase is a green light. A uh, 2 to 3% increase is a yellow light. And anything basically above a 5% increase is out the window. Don't do it. All right. And you could see that a lot of times if, say, for instance, there was earnings in the one that we're buying. We're going to be buying this one in and around earnings seasons a lot of times right now. Uh, so this one could have an earnings in this June. But the volatility we're seeing right now is so much higher that we're selling high volatility and buying low volatility, expecting volatility to expand going into those earnings. That is a great scenario for this strategy, right? We have high volatility that we're able to sell right now. We expect volatility to increase in the one we're buying. That's what we're looking for uh, for this strategy. And if we can get into it where we are selling volatility higher than we're buying it, that is just icing on the cake, okay? Now, keep in mind, these next couple of slides are about our break even, and this all comes into effect at the expiration of the strategy, all right? So we aren't going to necessarily always see that. And it's also assuming a lot of other things like the max profit can be unlimited because of the different expiration cycles, right? If we let that short call expire worthless, we've got that long call on for the duration of the option. Well, yeah, it could go to the moon and beyond, right? In that time. So it could be considered unlimited. But at the onset, we're looking at this the width of the strikes minus the debit paid is our max profit. Now I gave you an example, right? We only want to pay less than 75% the width of the strikes. That example being a $10 wide spread, right? $10 wide on our strikes. We pay $7.50. Then that means our max profit is $2.50, right? Now on the uh, loss, is our debit paid? Remember, anytime we pay a debit for a strategy and options, we are only risking that debit. And then our break even is going to be the long call strike plus the debit paid. Now, our volatility can affect the break even, right? If all of a sudden our long call starts expanding in value, our break even is actually going to become better, all right? Because at the onset, it's our long call strike plus the debit paid. But if our long call volatility starts increasing, that's going to help us out on our break even. All right. And if volatility really starts dropping, we don't necessarily have to worry about that anymore because we've already paid for that extrinsic value of that option when we set it up. Right. When we sold that call, we're going to try and pay for that extrinsic value. So I'll show you how to set this up on the platform. All my other rules with this, setting up this strategy, guys, like the width of this spread or, or the width of the uh, bid offer on an underline is still in effect. And that rule is picking the right option. If our uh, Walmart is our underlying and any stock under $100, we need our bid to the offer on the closest to expiration the spot month to be 10 cents or less. Okay. This usually fits the rule. Uh, we've had really high volatility right now. So, you know, a lot of these options are getting wider. Okay. So um, you, you might have to stretch that out. Just know that when we're doing this, you know, it's a green light if it's a stock under $100 uh, and it's 10 cents wide. I would say if it's under $100 and it's in this kind of environment, 15 cents wide, that works, okay? Uh, over $100 stock, what I do is move the decimal three ticks to the left, and then that's how wide the bid offer should be. 
three ticks to the left, Cummings should be 13 cents wide. It's not, it's way over that. So that would probably be one that I would not implement the strategy around. We could go in and look at say Pepsi, it should be 10 cents, move it three ticks to the left, 11 cents wide. It's a little wider than that. So any stock over a hundred dollars, you know, it's almost like uh, add another nickel or dime to it right now is the way it's gonna seem. But my rule of thumb for most environments, we're seeing some extraordinary environments right now, right? The last couple of days, you know, a thousand point rally in the Dow. And then at the end of the day, the Dow is, or well, the Dow at one point in the day was down over 500. And then at the end of the day, it was positive. So those are some wild swings that we generally are not going to be able to, um, are, are generally not gonna see on a day-to-day -day basis. So when you see that kind of volatility, the markets do get a little wider. But um, you're, you're gonna have to say that if it breaks that rule, we're starting to look at a yellow light, okay? And then, um, so that rule still abides. So this is when I throw it out to you guys. Low to medium volatility stocks is kind of what we're looking for, uh, implied volatility percent on this. So it's gonna be hard to find something with low to medium, but I wouldn't go over like a 60 implied volatility percent for this strategy. There's other strategies out there that have higher probabilities that will implement this strategy or other strategies around for this environment. But in this case, when we are going into a, a cycle where we can look to see where the earnings are, the earnings are set up perfectly for this in that month that we're going to be buying. Let me find a different chart that has it on the expansion. So if we looked at like Pepsi, for instance, on the chart, we can see that Pepsi's earnings is actually going to land on the one that we'd be selling. But if it's out here and this earning is in the one that we're buying, we're okay with that. All right. So throw out some stocks in the uh, questions box. That's where uh, I'll pull out some of your examples. We'll see if it fits my rules. And then we'll go through the steps uh, as we go along through this together. All right. So somebody's throwing out Lulu. I'd be bullish on Lulu. Um, the only reason why is because I didn't see anything on sale in their store this year at going shopping and um and there was tons of people in there so it did not look like the brick and mortar was dead but let's just look at lulu see when they have earnings so their earnings come out in march that's far enough out that's probably where we're going to be buying okay um outside of march and then we're going to be selling in this and since there's a couple of free months in here you could see where we could sell the january and the february and continue to collect some more credit on this all right, and continue to lower that basis. We'll probably be able to pay off this extrinsic value at the onset, uh, but it doesn't mean that we can't continue to roll this out and uh, uh, lower our basis, increase the, our width of the spread. Coles is asking, um, how do you make money on this? Coles, we make money on this when the market moves up. All right, so with Lulu, let's take a look at this real quick. That's the quick and dirty of it. So let's just take a, I'm gonna need more than that. Let's go to 40. All right, so actually I don't want 140. I just want 40 guys. I don't want all of them. All right, so what we need to do for Lulu is look at the one that we're possibly gonna be selling. I will tell you, you know, I said 35 days to expiration is about where we're looking to sell this, uh, get short. The January is really starting to see our, that theta decay happen, it's difficult to sell this January. We're probably gonna have to go out to the February, which is about to become the spot month anyway, but we're probably gonna have to move out there to make sure that this strategy works. Somewhere around the 150 days to expiration is what I'm looking for, right? And we are going to be looking at the Delta and the Gamma. One thing I said, $100 stock, right? Move the decimal three ticks to the left, 12 cents wide. These should be 12 cents wide. Right now they're 50 cents or more. That's a little bit wider than I'd like to see. It's after the market. Nobody's leaving anything in there. Um, but I'm gonna go with it because I know Lulu has a lot of volume and open interest, generally speaking. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play with it. 
And then a 84 Delta is about that one that I want to buy that's in the money. So that's where I'm looking to start it out. So if I look at, let's say the 82, I'm going to try and go a little bit closer. That's this 95 strike. Now here you guys go. Here's a trader hack for you. When I was talking about extrinsic and intrinsic value, this strike, we're buying the 95 strike. What is its actual, what's it really worth? This 95 call. Well, the underlying is trading 123. The difference is what it's worth. So 95 to 123 means this is worth about uh, $28.50, let's just say. $28.50 is what this is worth. And if we uh, look over here to the options to the side, that's going to give you a ballpark as to what the extrinsic value is. This has a little bit more in it uh, than the $28, uh, $28 to this. It's got an extra dollar in here. We're not going to worry about that too much. So, but that's a quick, easy way to figure out how much extrinsic value we need to pay off. So we know we need to at least sell um, $5 worth of extrinsic value. So we go over to this option montage. Like I said, this is looking a little too tight uh, for the options I want. So I'm going to move it out a little bit further in time. $5 is what I want to pay off. So we're going to be able to go to the 130. All right. So I've got the 90, 130 paying $28 for it. Make sure I set that up correctly. So we need to make sure it's less than 75% the width, right? How do we figure that out? Well, we take what we're paying, I'm just gonna say $29 and divide that by the width of this, which is $35, right? So it's 82%, it's a little wide for me. So I'm gonna to have to try and look for something else uh, to try and do that same thing. Obviously I wasn't able to pay off all the extrinsic value. Uh, what did I say, it was 28.30, so about 50 cents of extrinsic value I wasn't able to pay off. So let's try a different strike. Let's go a little bit further into the money then and try and use that. So I've got the 90 strike here. I'm gonna try and use this same 130 strike and we have $32, so we need to figure out that one. So we've got $32.70 and divide that by the width of the spread, which is uh, $40 now, right? From 90 to 130 is $40. So divide that by 40, and that gives us 81%. That seems a little off. The pricing has changed a little bit since the last time I did it. Uh, let's try, did I punch everything in right? $32.70 divided by $40. I thought for sure this one would work. And it's 81, so that would be like the yellow light, right? We make too much on this. And so, for instance, calls you were asking, so $32 here, and it's $40 wide, we can make $7 on this strategy. But know that when we're buying this, right, we are, buy it, it's synthetically buying this underlying. Because if you add in to the 90 calls, this $32, that gives us 112.71, right? Or sorry, one, we had the $32 to the 90, that gives us 122. 122.71, right? 32 plus 90 is 122.71. Well, if I buy this at 122.71, I bought it below where the underlying is currently trading. So my break even is, remember, we add the debit into the long call. My break even is below where the underlying is trading. Okay? So that works out. The only thing that's not working out on this one right now is it's a yellow light because it's not less than 75% the width of the strikes. This is a green light because we went from a 4888 volatility to a 4866. That is less than a 2% increase. So that's a green light. If the only yellow light we had was this width and I was pretty bullish in it, then I would, I would say that that would work out. All right. The green light would be paying less than 75% the width of the strikes. Somebody was asking, can we do ETFs like IWM? 
Yes, you can. So here, let's uh, let's look at XRT. Is that a good one? Or we, I could even actually look at IWM also. Uh, let me just look at XRT real quick. So XRT, it's a $40 stock. Obviously, there's no earnings. Um, so we don't have to worry about that. We do have to worry about the volatility increasing by less than 2%. It decreases again, so we don't have to worry. That's a green light. Uh, I'm going to look at like the 84 Delta, which is right here, the 32 strike. Um, we're going to buy that. One of the things to note, it, uh, during the day session, I even checked this one. You know, these are like two or three cents wide, right? Right now, it's almost 10 cents wide. Uh, but it still fits my rule, despite the fact that it's after hours. You know, that rule is during open market trading. After the market closes, people cancel orders, believe it or not. And then those markets aren't represented and the markets get wider. So this rule is for day session. So XRT, we're buying the June 32 calls. And um, those June 32 calls, what's my trader hack? You look over here to find the extrinsic value. That's the theta decay. The corresponding put will tell you, give you the indication as to what the um, extrinsic value of this is that we need to sell. And we needed to sell about 60 cents. Um, I'm going to go a little bit tighter to make sure that I get it, to capture all of it. And let's just see if it works out. So I've got the 30, the Feb 43, June 32 call, poor man's covered call. Um, one thing to note is we've got a $9 wide here, or sorry, we've got an $11 wide. I'm having trouble with math today, I guess. Um, so $8.50, we've got $8.53, and it is $11 wide, so divide by $11, and we come up with 77. That's the best case scenario so far. Keep That would be, to me, I would say we're good to go. Uh, it's as close as you're going to get to that <laughs> with me just finding random examples. So that one's a pretty good one. One thing I also want to show you on the analyze tab let's go to analyze the trade and uh it's not gonna let me squeeze this in a little bit tighter so we can see it and then you'll be able to see that it uh it's gonna go flat should go flatter here so you got your limited risk to the downside are eight dollars and 53 cents and then our max profit to the upside is going to be that uh what two dollars and 50 some odd cents uh, $2.47 is our max profit on this. So if the market rallies up and hits that 43, that is a tough problem to have, right? We've made our, our money on the upside. Don't worry about that call. It is going to increase in value, but it's not going to increase in value as much as the ones that are in the money. Remember that this option we bought in the money it's an 84 delta. So for every dollar increase in this underlying, it goes from $40.55 to $41.55. This option is going to increase by 84 cents. This one is only going to increase by 30 cents. So for every dollar move higher, we're going to gain 50 cents, which is pretty equivalent to what you would see at the stock. Now, what I was talking about with that synthetic put added in here, you guys. So if we're buying this option, the 32 calls, if the underlying goes below $32, we have no more risk to the downside. If you own this stock though, that you have risk all the way to zero. Now, what's the likelihood XRT is going to go to zero? Uh, it's slim and none and slim just left town, right? But the fact of the matter is, is you know you could experience more losses if you just owned XRT below 32 than you would with this strategy. Your risk is limited here. So what I was saying, we bought this 32 calls. We paid $8.50. So we paid $40.53 for this underlying, which is still below where the underlying is currently at, right? We're paying $40.53 because our call, the 32 calls plus 
The $8.53 means our break even is at $40.53. Well, our break even is below where the underlying is at. Our break, that's where we bought it, is below where the underlying is trading. And you can't do that with stocks where you're getting it below where the underlying is trading. This we can, all right? And we're not limited or we're not experiencing any more risk below 32. Whereas the stock, you would continue to feel that to the downside. This we're limited. We know what our risk is, right? Somebody else was looking at Cron. So Crono Group. So let's look at the ones that are closest to expiration. It's a $10 stock, so it should be at least 10 cents wide. That's fitting that rule pretty good. Uh, let's look at going out of, on the curve. So we're going to look at like the 84 delta. It's not going to give us to it. So let's go a little deeper. Let's buy this $8 stock. Um, and then, oops, I want to go further out than that. I want to go out uh, about, um, let's go out to the April since they're not giving us the one we want. That's the one I want to buy in the money. Um, I'll go to the 88s here. So it's this, I'm going to go to the 90s because I don't, or the $9 ones because I don't like doing the half strikes. Um, so I'm gonna buy the $9 one. I've got to get a dollar twenty-five. Try and collect a dollar twenty-five. And that's not going to happen. So I will have to go deeper in the money. Um let's go. All right, let's just do the seven and a half. All right, I'll do the seven and a half, fifty cents. I gotta try and collect. I'm gonna to go to this one, try and sell this for fifty cents. That's that's thirty-six delta. It lines up, right? When we're doing that 84, 36, that works out pretty good. My break even uh, is $9.45, right? At the $2.45 into the $7.50, that gives me $9.95, sorry. $9.95, I'm able to buy it below where the underlying is trading. All right, paying $2.45 for this strategy on a... Uh, really wide spread. So $4.50. This is going to be a really good one. So $2.45 divided by $4.50 gives you 54%. That one works out really good up to the point where I'm almost feeling like I did something wrong here. Bought it out here, seven and a half. Bought the seven and a half. Yeah, that works out. So there you have it. That one works out pretty good. Probably the best example. Thank you very much, uh, Helmet. Appreciate it. Uh, what are you selling in Cron? Uh, I am selling the 36 Delta February 12 calls. 12 calls in the February and buying the uh, seven and a half calls in the April. So it's, oh, that's why I did it. That's why it's off, you guys. I did the math wrong again. So basically it's $2.45, $2.45 divided by the width of the spread, which is actually uh, $3.50. Still gonna be pretty good. Divided by $3.50. It's 70%. Sorry about that, you guys, on the math. 70%. That's still good. That's still a good strategy to do. That one works. And uh, somebody was throwing out IWM. Because IWM has got to be bullish by this time, right? You know, I, I've been talking about it. I think it's, it's ready for the bounce. So I'm good with it to the upside. Um, I'm going to close the January because I don't think it's going to work here. Uh, going out about 150 days, 176 days. It's kind of a pick. I'm let's start with this one though. I'm going to start with about this 84 Delta in the money. So I'm looking at the 105 strike to buy and I've got to pay off about a dollar 60 in extrinsic value. I can just look at that to figure it out. And, um, just as a quick trader hack, it's not always exact, but it's close enough for government work. And then I'm going to come in closer and I'm going to try and sell this one right here. Uh, the 141, only because this is where I'm paying off my extrinsic. I'm going to just check out what it is to go a little bit closer. 
So I'm buying 105 strike, add in $27. That gives me 132.28. I'm 132.28. That's below where the underlying is trading. That's good. That means I paid off all the extrinsic value. So I've got to figure out if it's uh, fits my rule for the width of the spread in relation to uh, the debit paid. So we look at the $27.27, divide that by the width of the spread, which is uh, 36. So divided by 36 gives me 75.75. That's That one works. It's a little bit higher. It's a bit of a yellow light, but um, that works for me. Uh, one thing I forgot to check, does this stay within two percentage points? Yes, it is a negative for percentage points. So I don't have almost five percentage points. So I don't have to worry about it. That's only if it goes from 30, 26 to 32, 26. Okay. So we went below that. We're good. What happens if uh, cron goes above 12? You're going to start seeing that call increase in value, but it's not going to increase in value as much as the long call is increasing in value. So you're going to see, continue to see your profitability goes up. Now, I will usually cover this strategy as soon as my short call is breached. If it never gets breached, then I'm just going to roll my short call out in time and hopefully higher. So I'd roll it out in time from the 40, 141 strike to the 142 strike and still collect a credit. That's what I'm going to continue to try to do is roll this out in time and higher and collect a credit if it never gets breached. If the market comes up and rallies all the way to these 42 calls or 41 calls within the time that I'm in this next 50 days, that is a good situation, okay? And that's where I'm gonna try and cover it because I've beaten the probabilities. The probabilities of me being in the money at expiration is only about a 26% chance, but the probability in the next 50 days of IWM trading 141 is about a 25% chance. So I'm going to go with the 50% beating the probabilities. So if the market comes up here and tests me, that's where I'm covering this trade. That's what I look at. If you guys are looking at this and saying, well, I'm gonna wait till it goes to 143, that's where I think it's gonna go. Well, then that's fine. Just know those calls are going to be, those short calls are going to be in the money, right? You're going to have to worry about that assignment risk for an extra dollar increase in this strategy, right? Because if it goes from 41 to 43, that's a $2 increase. Well, I'm only increasing my value by 50%, or 50 cents every dollar increase, right? Because we decided that if I buy the 85 Delta, and I sell the 26 delta, that difference is 50, 50, right? Well, if I'm long 50 deltas total on this strategy, delta tells us for every dollar increase in the underlying, our strategy will increase by our delta, which is 50 cents. So this goes up by a dollar, our strategy goes up by 50 cents. Yes, it skews a little bit the further uh, in time, we have this strategy, but it's going to be very close to that 50%, 50 cent increase, right? I don't think it's worth it for that extra dollar, you know, to have my short call go $2 in the money. So I'm going to cut, and, and the probabilities of the market coming back down or correcting a little bit during this next 50 days is pretty high. I mean, we've seen that happen within day sessions. So when the market comes up and Hits my 141. As soon as IWM trades 141, that's where I'm covering this strategy. That's my rule for that. But if you guys use the stuff for like Fibonacci and uh, or market profile like I do, I have no problem with that. I just think that the market's going to bounce and come up and test this area here. I'm okay to be out before that happens at 141. When do I look at Vega? And are you talking about uh, the VIX, are you talking about Vega down here, over here? 
because this is the Vega. And I look at Vega for this strategy to make sure that these are very close in comparison. Now, generally speaking, uh, normal markets, we I don't believe anybody thinks that we are seeing normal markets. In normal markets, volatility usually increases out the curve. We're not seeing that right now. So my rule for Vega when I look at this strategy is it's less than a 2% increase going from 30.26 to 32.26. It's got to be less than that for this to be a green light. Well, it is less than a 2% increase. It's actually a 5% decrease, all right? So that's what we're looking for for Vega. My rule for the underlying is over $100 stock, move it three ticks to the left. That's how wide the bid offer should be. Under $100, they should be 10 cents wide. ETFs almost always fit that rule, no matter what, before, during, or after the market. Some other stocks, people especially right now, are not going to leave their uh, options in overnight. We're just going to cancel everything and wait and see what happens. So IWM is a good one as well. That one works. Anybody else have any other questions before we move on? All right. At the end of the day, what I want you guys to do is learn how to trade with higher probabilities. Like I said, you can go online and find out how to do this strategy out there online. They are going to tell you to go out and buy the, you know, the 200 uh, expiration option and sell a near term expiration stock option and you're on your way. But at, with these strategies, like with that Lulu, you know, if they if you followed their rules for Lulu, let's just take a example of Lulu real quick of a bad example. Um, if I were going to go in here and look at selling something like the, uh, let's just say we, we went with the other, the Jan, you know, I've been staying away from this January. Let's say we did the Jan June and I was looking at this for the 90, that's about the 85 uh, Delta, right? So the 90 calls buying that one, I got to pay off say $4. So I come into this January and try and sell that $4 one, um, which is probably right around the uh, 127-ish. So we'll sell that one and uh, look at it to see if 33.87 added into 90 gives us 123.87. We're paying a little bit over where we were there. Um, width of the spreads. Let's take a look at that and say that it's we're paying $33.87 and divide that by the difference here, which is $37, 37. And that gives us a 91%. We're paying 91% the width of the spread. I've actually seen this, you guys, where you are paying more than the width of the spread. Like, and in this example, $37 is width. We could be paying $37 and one penny. That means we've locked in that penny loss. You can't, you can't make money during this option expiration cycle. Next 28, 22 days, we can't make money, All right? So stay away from those kind of ex examples. It will happen. Don't let it. Make sure you check and double check, All right? So I'm trying to teach you guys things like that so that you guys can be confident, right? If you know what you're getting into, then you'll be more confident. I'm trying to give you guys that peace of mind so you're not second guessing whether or not this strategy is appropriate for this particular situation. I'm trying to break it down to the nuances where you guys look at it and say, hey, you know what? That makes sense. Why would I pay 95% the width of the spread? There's way too much risk for reward there. Right. And they are going to tell you how to do that online. I tell you how to trade like this in every one of my webinars. All right. So if you guys have enjoyed any of my instruction or learned anything at all, you guys should click on this, which is in the chat window. Hold on a second. It's not in the chat window yet. I spoke a little too soon. I didn't have that prepared. So I'm sending this out to all you guys right now. I've got the link. So you can just click on that link in the chat window. We've been going back and forth in the questions box. It's over there in the chat window. It gives you a direct link to this. And it has all kinds of great 
uh, webinars in here. There's over 10 of them for 36 bucks. You guys can't beat it. Um, like I said, for $36, if you know that when you're getting into a strategy and you're confident that you built it out to the highest probabilities you can, then you guys are going to be able to sleep at night. You're not going to second guess yourself. If you're not second guessing yourself, you guys are going to be confident and be able to put on more strategies, which increases your probabilities even further, right? The more probability you have out there, you're playing the probabilities to their fullest, right? If you only have one on, the probabilities can beat you. But if you have a ton on, the probabilities are going to work themselves out. So take advantage of that, right? Stay mechanical. When you guys are using the right tools in the right situation, you're going to be a more productive state of mind, right? And that will increase your profitability going further. And that's about it. Other than I want to thank you guys all. Later webinars, I'll be drilling down on different option components, when and where I find them. Yes, I see you guys throwing them out a couple of questions. I'll get to them in here in a second. Uh, also, here's a link. It's a little bit easier to read. It's not a hyperlink. You will, if you are watching this on tape delay, have to type this into your URL because you don't have the benefit of having the chat window hot link. Um, and if you have any questions, reach out to us at 310-598-6677 or email us at trading at protraderstrategies.com. But take advantage of this one because it has a lot of great stuff in there, you know, especially taking care of your uh, your bond portfolio. I was, just had family in town. If you were talking to grandma and grandpa or mom and dad, they are whining about their bond portfolios right now because despite the fact that interest rates are going up, that should help all of these um, baby boomers, it's not helping them because they've had to get into the low interest rates for the last 10 years. So as interest rates go up now, their bond portfolio is getting decimated. So check that out, how to protect that, teach your family how to do that and uh, take advantage. We'll help you out. All right, that's all I got for you guys. Other than if you can't take that, take it easy. See you next year, JQ. <laughs> All right, so uh, a couple of questions popped up, I thought. On the IWM, we skipped the uh, 18 Jan because of the days to expiration is 22, uh, less than 30. And Chris, so yes, the, the IWM, I did it in that example to see if we could work it in closer. It is going to be a tough one right now because that near expiration is so close to, you know, the end of days, like on my, uh, where was my, let me see if I can find that one example real quick. I'll slide this. Right, we're inside this 22 days to expiration. Well, inside of 30 day, 35 days, we see a 50% decrease in the options premium right here. Well, we're at 22 days. So we've seen almost half of that decay happen for those options half of this 50% decrease. So it's very difficult to get in there right now because we're so close to that. We've already seen all of this. That's why I started looking out here to get that one that I'm selling to be in line for this big sell-off. Does that make sense, Chris? Good. Outstanding seminar. Best wishes. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too, Chris. I appreciate all the kind words. All right, that's it then, guys. Go out there. This, like I said, this, don't be afraid to try this strategy out because it is a great environment right now for it. Because anytime you can sell higher volatility than you're buying, you are getting ahead in the game. All right. Take care, you guys.